to Coffee and Conversation. Very excited about today. And before we get going, I want to make sure that you know that we have online Bible studies, and we would love for you to get involved in that. You can go to the link in the description if you would like to be involved in one of our online Bible studies. We also have a Spanish Bible study as well. And uh, man, let let your friends know. Share this link. Let people know about Coffee and Conversation, because I do believe that this little recap and conversation could truly help change somebody's life. Uh, also, what I've noticed here, y'all, is uh, none of us have coffee for the coffee and conversation, which, which is a problem. I mean, um, you know, do we need to change the name to conversation? Do we? So, we'll talk about that after. Mm-hmm. But what I really am curious, Frank, okay, is what it, in all of us? What is the your favorite number one fast food restaurant? Zaxby's. 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 <laughs> really? Zaxby's. Yeah. Oh, man. They never Zaxby's? disappoint. It's always hot. They never disappoint. What's that? Yeah, I'm going to go with Zaxby's. Confession. For me. I'm okay, what do you Zaxby's. get there? Yeah. I get um, the wings and things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wings and things. Yes. What are, the th- wings. what are the things? <laughs> yes. Uh, the things are um, <laughs> chicken. Uh, chicken tenders and bone-in chicken wings. Have you tried their new chicken sandwich? Listen. If I'm going to get a chicken sandwich, I'm going to Popeye's or Chick-fil-A. I'm not going to Zaxby's, okay? I'm well, I've never been to Zaxby's. Maybe that's a different entire. conversation. I've what? I've really? never been to Zaxby's. It was founded at my university. Oh, man. So the first one was on campus at my school. Well, okay. praise the Lord. It's so good. What is your yeah. favorite? Zaxby's, I appreciate that, Frank. Number yes. one, Zaxby's. Hannah. Not Zaxby's. Not uh, Zaxby's. <laughs> I like Nando's. It's like a... Yeah, we don't really have them in the south here, um, but they they do have them up north, and it's like a British chain, but it's like South African chicken. Nando's. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. really if you're, if, it's with, great. <laughs> search Nando's right now, and if you have been to a Nando's, will you just like this or put Nando's yeah. for real in the comments? Something that I... That yes. we can know that Nando's is legit. Yes, and order legit. the little order the little pastries, so good. I I love grilled chicken, spicy, I, so good. Nando's, there you, there go. you go. I'm excited about I'm Evans. No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, and then I'm I'm so excited about Evans. What you don't know about Evan is he. There's a lot you don't know about Evan. Uh, Anyways, um, my favorite. <laughs> oh. Truly, this is kind of a secret, so y'all don't tell me. I keep looking at the camera, and I apologize, but I just want the people to know. This this is a big deal, and I'm going to share this with the world right now. And some people who know me know this, but my favorite fast food restaurant, truly, don't judge, Log John, Log John Silver's. Hey, okay. Do you know I mean, what that is? I, yes, I do. Okay. But I don't, it's like a more, it's like a more hey, southern Captain D. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. As a matter of fact, I didn't know like they even a, had them anymore. Hey, like hey, a greasy Captain hey, D's. Hey, yes, they, they have A&W root beer on tap. Hey, but, but when I go there, I kind of sneak through the drive-thru and I pay with cash. Because I feel like I don't want anybody to know. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. I've well, called this guy a long John Silver's before. There was a long John at A&W combined. It was yes, together. Yes, that's what but, it is. Hey. All right, uh, Evan, funny. we will get into the Bible here in a second, uh, right? I hope so. Yes. If not, right. we're having a great conversation with no coffee. Part of it. Okay. Yeah. I would have to say it, it truly depends on what I'm getting that day. Yeah. But if I'm looking at a holistic drive through favorite <laughs> fast food place. Holistic. Okay. It's Whataburger. Without a doubt. Great Without call. Without a doubt. Now, listen. Great I've done a, call. I've done, you know, blindfold you know, taste tests right. and things like right. that. But I would right. have to say from the from the crispiness of the fries yep. with the salt to the to the amount of fries you get to the size of the drink to the burger dough meat double cheese all the way. You talking praise I don't him. know if there is a better Put burger. But praise and him in the just in, in, in the chat right now. <laughs> just, if praise water, just praise hands. Just praise hands. Just praise hands. And I will say this, water if you have never had a good patty melt, oh, you will best. have one. From Waterburger. That's great. Waterburger is the best patty melt. Okay. Thank you guys. Let's get okay. into the reason that we're here today. <laughs> Everybody just fast forward through that, or they they tuned out because <laughs> they don't care because of Long John Silver. So, uh, Hannah, why don't you why don't you lead us with uh, with the the message from Pastor Jordan um, over Acts of, of really what what stood out to you yeah. from this past week? For sure. I mean, Pastor Jordan gave an incredible message going through Acts twenty six. Um, talking about Paul's defense of of his faith to King Agrippa. Um, And it was incredible just to see the power of someone's testimony um, changing lives and the fact that Paul was really willing to risk everything um, to make a defense of his faith and to share his story. 
And that was what stood out the most to me about this message was Jordan said, you know, Paul knew that sharing his faith might not bring him freedom um, when he could have had freedom other ways, but that it was worth it, that, you know, the danger, um, the persecution, none of it matters in light of the power of the gospel and in the way um, that that Jesus has changed our lives and that mm. our stories have that power too. That's great. Um, and that, wow, it, it made me excited. Yeah. I was just, you know, ready to go share after that. So. It's outstanding. Because I, I love... I think you said it early on was talking about how how we all have a platform and how mm-hmm. Paul Paul kind of maximized his platform yeah. right like we all have platforms we all have opportunities but are we using our platform in our opportunities mm-hmm. you know I mean and, and Paul man he he didn't go to Rome for a vacation no you know I mean mm-hmm. I mean he didn't travel on vacation I mean he traveled to make Christ know mm-hmm. I mean and, and I love that that pastor capitalized on that yesterday it, you know, in, in this past uh, weekend, I, I took my son to a Dude Perfect, uh, we call it a concert, Dude Perfect. I mean, these guys are, you know, crushing it on YouTube, and they do trick shots and fun things, and I mean, they've, they've packed out stadiums, they're doing a little tour, and what was so interesting, and what I thought was awesome, was at the end of this fun night, I mean, he's got a packed out arena, he shared the gospel. Uh Nobody was expecting that. I mean, it was just, and, and, and what he said, he said, man, our, you know, the millions of dollars that we make, all the followers that we have, this merchandise, none of this matters compared to Christ. Mm-hmm. And he said he really, had, his name's Tyler, he said he really had his life changed last year when they did a tour and they didn't share the gospel. Wow. And he realized they missed it. Wow. And he said he really, that they have made a decision. They're, they all love the Lord. I mean, they're all believers. And from this point on, from that point on, man, they're going to make sure they share. So I thought that was that is so cool. kind of went right. together right there. What a realization, also by him. I yeah. mean, I, I, there's so many people with, with those kind of platforms that they that never that never like pops in their mind. Yeah, you know, they, they you get the success and you just keep climbing that success and never think Jesus needs a part of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. So and cool. I think it also kind of that before and after of like I had this opportunity and I missed it, so I'm not going to miss it again. That kind of ties into what Pastor Jordan shared um, on Sunday too. That you know, Paul was talking about like this is who I was before. And then I was given this this moment with Jesus. I it changed my life, and this is why I am after. And because of that, that informed everything he did, every opportunity he had, and and everything that he went through, all the persecution, imprisonment, all of the things. It was worth it because mm-hmm. of that that transformative moment that he had with Jesus. And I think it's cool that they they realize they missed that chance, and then they've resolved to like not do that again. And I think that's like a challenge for us too in our everyday lives, like. It, we may never be in the exact same situation that Paul was in, and I may never be on a stage where I'm like, I don't want to miss this chance again. But but I have the chance every day, and like the stuff I'm doing to to share my story, um, and regardless of what your story looks like, it it has power. Um, you know, we see that over and over through the gospel of you know people being changed by the word of someone else's testimony, by what Jesus has done in their lives, and each of our stories carry that same power. So I love that he's using that platform. That's good. Yeah, hey, that's pretty good. Frank, just again, we're talking about this platform, and and in the chat right now, I would like for you guys to put. I'll come back to you, Frank. Yeah. Um, but I would I, I would like for you to put um, how you're using your platform, and if you're not sure, put a question mark. Um, and if you need help with that, man, message us, uh, message whatever you on Facebook or Instagram, YouTube, and let us know. Hey, I, I need some help with this, and we would love to help you and send you materials to help you um, use your platform. For Christ, because we all have a platform, and I was thinking about just just now, Frank, um, this weekend for you, mm-hmm. and how I believe that God gave you, if you will, a platform. Can you talk about that? Yes. A bit? Um, well, this weekend, man, you know, I had the opportunity to go and uh, minister uh, in uh, Athens, uh, preach, if you will, and um, I went, and it was it was just an awesome opportunity because of. Uh, it was uh, I was asked to do it through a family uh, family member that uh, we were having a, um, a family reunion, and in the family reunion they wanted me to do it, which was really cool because they could have chosen a whole lot of more qualified people than myself, but they they chose me, and so I had the opportunity to to minister, and and God moved in a big way. But what was really cool about it is the fact that these are the people that know you. Mm-hmm. They like they really know you. You know, they know your story before Christ. They know your story after Christ. And to be able to see God move and be used in that way to confirm 
who God is in my life and not only that, but to affirm within me that, hey, I'm still working and we, I'm still doing using you was a cool deal. And I think, uh, like, you know, when we get into to Paul, I think that's the one of the most powerful things about Paul's life and his story is he persecuted the very people or the very people he became. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then when he when he went in, he went all in. Mm -hmm. He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't go halfway. He was really mm -hmm. really all in. Yep. And you know you can see it in in the in the New Testament where he wrote what over two thirds of the New Testament. So mm -hmm. it's amazing, man, to be able to to be able to have a, someone give you a platform, and then not only that, you use it to glorify God. That's a that's a big deal. Yeah. He had. Um, I think it's so awesome, man. You sh you shared the gospel and you had two people accept yeah. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, awesome. just just out awesome. outstanding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Praise the Lord, Frank. It's that's those those sorts of things are so fun to hear. There are three big things uh, that you know Jordan, Pastor Jordan, uh, really hit on in in the message. And again, the message we're, we're referring to is uh, from Acts twenty six and um from september 26th i'm pretty sure that's that's yep. correct yep. And, if, oh, wow. and if and if you want to see that if if you could go back and watch you can watch the full <laughs> message on youtube and um that would be outstanding and share that message because we do believe uh that these three questions that jordan asked pastor jordan asked are big for every single one of us and and three things that stood out uh number one god expects us to share our story mm -hmm. and uh and, and are we doing that are we sharing our story it's so hard and sometimes we get we get caught up in well my story doesn't matter i didn't do drugs i didn't grow up in this and it's like oh it, it doesn't matter no, no no your story is beautiful if you grew up in a christian home and had no trauma or drama your story is beautiful because God placed, placed you there. I think another thing that he said was Christians should be, expect to be misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, Evan, was there ever a time in your life where you feel like you were misunderstood um, for what you were or, or how you were living for Christ or maybe what you said for Christ? Oh, I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be super simple, yeah. I mean, um, I think... In high school, when my life kind of changed around, uh, I mean, people viewed me completely different, and I didn't view myself completely different. I think I viewed myself as just a follower of Jesus, and it took so long to kind of bridge that gap from um, from misunderstanding uh, to understanding as far as like, hey, I'm not a different person. I now just have a relationship with Jesus. And and I think, man, when I look at, at this chapter in, in Acts 26, I think Paul gives a phenomenal example of how simple it is to share your faith. And I, and I think that was a trouble. That was trouble for me in high school. I didn't understand was that Paul, he didn't invent the wheel talking, talking here in Acts 26. I mean, he, he told his background where he met common ground with the people he was talking to. And then he just told the story of Jesus. I mean, that's as simple as it is. And I think for me, where, where I did grow up in, in a good house, the common ground for me is with all of those people who feel that they don't have a story because their life has always been really good. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's always someone you have common ground with. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always someone you have common ground with. Yeah, absolutely. I think something that, that really resonated with me about that idea of, like, our lives looking different. Um, we talked a little bit last time, and we've talked before about the idea of like serving those around them and just loving people wholly and fully. And it, it looks really weird, especially in a world where it's like not that common to just be kind to people and to love them unconditionally. Um, going out in our community and getting to serve with the church, um, like 2,000 people going out and serving this community. Um, the questions that people would ask, it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you taking time to, you know, wash my car? Why are you taking time to give out food? Why are you taking time to serve? And those are the kind of things where it's like people know us by by the impact that Jesus has had on our lives. And it's like because of him, I serve. Because of him, I'm willing to share and put everything on the line to share the gospel, to share what he's done in my life. Um, and I think that that idea, though, of like taking those moments of, yes, I'm doing something in my life looks really weird to people watching because they don't get why I'm doing this. And taking that moment to say and put a name to it and say, it's because of Jesus. It makes it worth it. Um, and it makes it worth whatever might come with that. That's that, that's, that's really powerful. Um, one thing I will say though is that when when you're when we're telling our story, the the most important thing I think is that you can't refute someone's story. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. it. Doesn't matter, you know what they you know people debate the thing that we know to be life and true, 
which is the Bible. People debate it, but people can't debate your story. And when you say, you know, because of Jesus, this is why I have what I have, or because of Jesus, I can do the things that I didn't think I ever was able to do. Because of Jesus, I've overcame this. You can't debate that. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so powerful, even when Paul is telling his story. I think that's why it's so powerful, even in, in, in front of the king. You know, you can say what you want to say, but my story is real. That's right. Yep. You can you can debate what you want, yep. but my story is real. So, yep. um, I think that that's really powerful about living out of our story mm -hmm. is because you can't debate that. Yep. It's, yeah. it's not up for debate. You know, yeah. I, I love I love towards the end where where you know the king's like you didn't even have to come here. Yeah, Paul's like, yeah, I did. It, yeah, you know, tr truthfully, he was right. like, yeah, I did. I mean. I have a platform, and I need to maximize what I have. I need to maximize the opportunity. And I know that if I did this, I could, I could put Jesus up here. And, and I yeah. love that about about where this story tells off to the end, because that I mean that's truly it. Truly ties right back into the beginning of how God expects us to share our story. You know, I mean, I mean, I love it. And I would love to know your story. Those those that are watching this, um, and send us send us an email at extendedfamily.church at firstbaptistcleveland.com. Again, that link will be in the uh, description. And and share your story with us. And maybe for some of us, uh, or some of you, that's that's your first step in sharing your story. Um, because, and, and I, love, I love what Frank said, nobody can dispute your story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got, I've got kiddos, and, and, and my son is, is wanting to share Jesus, and he's like, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how. And I just tell him to just talk about, your life and how you accepted Christ and how he got baptized and, mm -hmm. and, and all the things. And, and he's so excited about that because he, he's, he's a talker and, uh, it's, it's, it gets it it's, it's fun. It, I <laughs> couldn't tell you definitely not my wife. So, uh, and so anyways, just sharing our story is so, is so massive. And I would love to hear your story and with your permission to share your story as well. Um, and then at the very end, we, we see here that, uh, well, I, I, I want to read this verse, Acts 26, uh, verse 15. This is, this is when uh, Saul was, was traveling, and, uh, and then, you know, a big light comes, and he, and he falls down. And then in verse 15, he says, uh, I asked, who are you, comma, Lord? It's very interesting to mm -hmm. me. Who are you, Lord? You know, he knew. He knew at that moment. He knew when before this, you know, he'd been persecuting and been a part of and seeing all these things. He's like, oh, this is who I've been hearing about. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Lord, question mark. Yeah, that's good. It's really, really, really awesome. Um, yeah. And as, as, as we close out, the question for me that, uh, you know, do I, do I stick out or do I blend in mm -hmm. with the world? When people see me, what do I look like? Hmm. And, and, and man, that's, that's convicting is, is there's times when I'm like, I look, I look like the world mm -hmm. or even, even being a pastor, I look like a business leader, like just a secular business leader versus a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's super convicting mm -hmm. for me of, of when pastor Jordan said, you know, ask those hard questions. Like, do we, do you stick out? Am I living courageously for Christ? Am I being bold? Um, really the question is, are we living our lives set apart, which, which set apart in the Bible, you see it all over the place, is the word holy. Mm -hmm. Are you set apart? Um, I don't know if y'all want to add on to that or take away or close it out, but y'all are set apart. You guys are the, this is the guy. I, it, when you look at this and you're watching this video, you can tell, you can tell the ones that love the Lord, these guys, and then there's me. And then there's me. So, uh, Frank, anything else you want to you want to drop on us? Mm, man, I, I I will say you know when we say set apart you know or do we blend in? Um, you know the scripture that comes to me comes to mind is you know being all things to all men, and 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 that doesn't mean that doesn't mean be all men. Mm -hmm. You know, um, understanding that there is a difference to you know blending in, and there is a difference to being you know. Uh, uh, appealing to people and what happens is I think what we do is we say we're trying to be all things to all men and we lose ourselves in 
trying to good. be like someone That's else. Good. You know, and God is calling us to stand out. So in that, oh, I think man. there is a there is an opportunity when we say, you know, be all things all men. I think it's very important to understand that simply means interest. That means uh, likes and dislikes. But what it doesn't mean is compromise who we are. That's great. So, um, so I, you know, so I hope my life says that I'm standing out based on um, who Christ is in me and my relationship with Christ. But I know just like we all do, we all come up short. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are times where I wish I was standing out more in areas of my life. And uh, that's why I got great friends like you to say, hey, Frank, this is what's up. Yeah. I challenge you here. I challenge you there. So, uh, But I do believe, I believe, you know, being a part of an awesome church, and, uh, First Baptist here in Cleveland, Tennessee, I think it's amazing that we have people that are really trying to do what God is asking us to do, and we're really going for it here. So uh, Pastor Jordan's message was just a reminder to keep going hard and to keep living out your story. That's great. That's awesome, yeah, man. Again, thank you guys for, for watching this. If you watch all the way to the end, uh, I'm so awesome that you're here, and I want you to do something. I want you to put in the in the chat, I made it to the end. And, uh, and you never know, you might, you might get a prize. I have no idea. You never know. <laughs> but I also want you to text the word family to 74784, and that's going to come to me. And, uh, man, I'll be able to send you some information of how you can continue to stay connected with extended family. And if you don't know Christ, you're watching this and somehow you, you got on here and you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, I would love to talk to you about that. And so uh, you can simply pray this prayer. Just say, Father, come into my life. Wash me clean. I want to know you. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, praise the Lord. I want you to text the word SAVED to 74784 so that I can communicate with you and help you take your next steps with Christ. So thank you again for tuning in to Coffee and Conversation.